Okay, good morning everyone. It's 10 o'clock, so we are going to begin with the presentation. Um, once again, um, thank you so much for joining us, and for those who have joined us in the past, welcome back. Those who have joined us for the very first time, we're glad to have you and hope that you will join us in the future uh, for our next experimental for population health webinar. So before we, ju we jump into today's presentation with uh, James Thompson from Everbrain, there is some housekeeping um, uh, stuff that I would like to talk about before we do that. So for those who For those who are joining us for the very first time today, THC is a regional population health collaborative group, and our goal here at THC is to connect diverse group of people to align resources and expertise. And our goal here is to work with our partners to improve the health of, of Western New York. Now, in terms of our housekeeping, stuff that I would like to go into, so this webinar is being recorded and will be posted on the Population Health Collaborative YouTube page. A copy of the slides will be sent to you, and as well as you can find a copy of it posted on our data website, um, Keys to Health. And if you have any questions, please um, send in those questions at the chat box. The chat box to your right, just answer the questions, and we We'll do our very best to incorporate those questions into James' uh, presentation. Or if you'd like to wait to the end of the presentation to send in the question, we can do that as well. So for our presenter today, James, we're very excited to have um, James join us today. James is the Health and Wellness Program Manager with Evergreen Health in Buffalo, New York and he oversees the, the Thrive Wellness and Emergency Food Pantry programs. Evergreen is an agency that fosters healthy communities by providing medical, supportive, and behavioral services to individuals and families in Western New York, especially those who are living with chronic disease or are within or in our underserved population. James, our potential, believes that Community health education works best when it is tailored to the community's needs, teaches, teaches them how to eat healthy, exercise, and manage stress in ways that they can, they can relate to. And as well as believe that from, from community health education fosters a fun and interactive environment and offers support. Now, the Thrive Program, wellness program that James manages, affirms that Evergreen Everybody's health stands on using the, the harm reduction model by meeting patients where they are and working with them on their personal goals in ways that we can, in ways that make sense to them. When patients learn how they can best commit to their own health, they see results, they have more energy, lead more active lives, and lower their risk for chronic disease health conditions. James holds a master's and public health from the University of Buffalo School of Public Health and Health Professions. And he has been working with Evergreen for the past seven years. So with that said, I would like to introduce um, James and welcome James for this presentation. All right, thank you very much, Clement, and thank you everyone for coming today. I really appreciate uh, you guys giving me the opportunity to talk with you about the Thrive Wellness Program. Now that we've been up for a year, you know, I think it's a really exciting program and uh, this will be good to be able to tell you guys about it in the community. So Thrive Wellness, a program that encourages healthy nutrition, activity and exercise, social interaction and behavioral change. So a little bit about my background, as Clement said, I'm Health and Wellness Program Manager at Evergreen Health. I oversee both the Thrive Wellness and Food Pantry programs. I hold a master's degree in public health from the University of Buffalo, and I've been working at Evergreen uh, for the last seven years. So a little bit about Evergreen and our affiliates. So Evergreen uh, was founded as AIDS Community Services back in 1983, and since then, uh, the Evergreen 
association historically has addressed the crisis generated by HIV and AIDS and other sexually related infections in Western New York. Today, Evergreen has grown to support the entire community. They increasingly work with underserved and or stigmatized individuals dealing with multiple chronic conditions such as HIV, AIDS, diabetes, heart disease, mental health challenges, substance abuse, as well as a variety of sexual minorities, many of whom are inadequately treated by mainstream providers. Also, one of our affiliates is the Prize Center of Western New York. Uh, they are a big factor in the LGBT plus community in Western New York. They have support groups for LGBT and trans individuals, linkage to medical care, transition care, social services, culturally competent training for community providers, and they also organize Buffalo's Pride Week Transgender Health Conference, among many other events. And Community Access Services, another one of our affiliates, they do, <coughs> pardon, they do a lot of outreach uh, to communities of color. They have a criminal justice initiative, harm reduction counseling, uh, testing, and sexual health care. Evergreen's holistic model of care is very important to us. We have over 9,000 patients uh, that see Evergreen, and we like to say that we're a one-stop shop. We offer a wide range of services, including the Evergreen Medical Primary and Specialty Care, a pharmacy, mental health counseling, substance use counseling, harm reduction and syringe exchange, HIV testing, STI testing, sexual health counseling and PrEP, uh, housing, transportation, nutrition assistance, as well as uh, care coordination. So real health care, uh, we believe, cannot be achieved uh, if many of the basics of daily living are not met. As you can see here, we do a lot of internal referrals. We make sure that our patients are well connected and the average patient who sees Evergreen is enrolled in three different programs. Also, Evergreen is a leader in HIV care and PrEP. So we have uh, a, a, a large uh, prep program where we get people on that medicine that helps them to prevent HIV infection when taken daily as directed. And we have a, a high rate of making sure that people who are diagnosed get in to see treatment immediately, get them uh, on medicine that will help uh, improve their lives greatly. So. The reasons for creating Thrive Wellness, uh, we started back in February of 2018, and we saw a need in our patient community. So Evergreen has education programs for sexual health, HIV, substance use, and harm reduction, among other programs, but we saw a need for group education programs on chronic metabolic conditions uh, and mental health. Especially with these conditions, you may go to your doctor, you're in there for a short visit, but you want more information and education on how to help yourself through these lifestyle changes. So we had staff with experience on facilitating group education on these topics, including a registered art therapist, and we wanted to think outside the box to deliver a holistic and supportive care program unique to the agency. So we partner with Evergreen Primary and Specialty Care, that's our medical practice, for all referrals. But by partnering with our medical practice, we have access to the electronic medical records for each patient for relevant diagnoses, communication and follow-up with the providers, and all of our session notes are logged in that EMR so that providers and counselors can get a better sense of the total care that their patients is getting outside of the doctor's office. So patients who enroll in our program, they enroll in education groups based on their diagnoses and needs. One of the groups that we offer, and I'll get into these right now, we offer a heart education, a heart disease education group. So it's a program that uses a CDC curriculum, which you can see on the screen, to educate patients on the basics of cardiovascular disease and its risk factors, diet, exercise, stress management, talking with providers. Uh, it delivers an overview of heart attack, stroke, the symptoms of those, heart failure, uh, the importance of managing cholesterol and blood pressure. Uh, patients in this group meet once per month for a group session and once per month for an individual follow-up session with our health and wellness counselor. Also, as part of the Heart Disease Education Group, we partnered with a Population Health Collaborative who, through a state grant from New York State, they gave us 20 uh, blood pressure monitors so that patients in our group who don't have a blood pressure monitor at home have been able to get one. Uh, it's really important if you have high blood pressure to monitor that every single day, especially when you wake up because that's when the reading is going to be most accurate. So this gives our patients the ability to 
uh, track their own blood pressure and show us or show their doctor so that we can get a better sense of what their blood pressure looks like on a daily basis. So we've delivered 13 of these monitors so far uh, to patients enrolled in the group. And they also get logs for tracking every day so that they can write it down and show us or show their providers. Our diabetes education group, a CDC-based program about the basics of diabetes, diet, physical activity, stress management, how to, uh, mental health, how to make lifestyle changes that last. Uh, it's also about understanding blood sugar, uh, getting proper sleep, how to track your diet and physical activity so that you can see uh, what you're doing and what changes you're willing to make to uh, improve your health in that way. Uh, managing diabetes is not just about taking medicine, it really is managing your whole lifestyle, what you're eating, uh, your physical activity, how to test your blood sugar, stress, uh, all those things are really important for managing diabetes. Uh, we also provide blood tracking sheets for diabetics who check their sugar multiple times a day so that they can track it on paper, they can mark it on a graph so that they can more easily see what their blood sugar is doing on a regular basis. Patients in this group meet twice per month for, for the group session and once per month individually as a follow-up with our health and wellness counselor. Also through Population Health Collaborative, I was able to receive certification in this program uh, to train to teach this program back in May. We have some success stories. I will get into total uh, outcomes later on. But two of our patients, just for example, who have enrolled in the group, have seen their A1C level cut in half since the start of the program. We also had one person who uh, had bariatric surgery. She had lost a significant amount of weight before entering the program, but through uh, diet and exercise has continued to lose weight, manage her sugar, and, you know, in, and uh, really get her health on track. Her patient's doctor told her that her A1C is normal and it's almost like she doesn't have diabetes, just to quote that. Another group that we offer is our Clear the Air Smoking Cessation Group. This is a Roswell Park curriculum uh, to uh, educate patients on the impact of smoking on their lives, the damage that tobacco can do, ways to replace smoking habits and triggers with healthier habits, uh, the different nicotine replacement therapy options that are available, how your body improves after quitting health-wise, the dangers of secondhand smoke. Uh, we, we really use uh, behavioral health uh, avenue to with this group because it's important not only with the nicotine replacement therapy options, but when we, we constantly tell our people who are smoking that when you're smoking many cigarettes in a day, it's important to look at different ways to try and replace just that one cigarette. If you can replace that one cigarette and do something else or, uh, you know, do something else to relieve your stress, that can become a new habit. Uh, patients in this group meet once per month for group sessions and once a month individually with our health and wellness counselor. And we've had successes too. Uh, we don't deny quitting smoking is very hard, but some of our patients have done it while others continue to come back for more assistance. And because we interface with our uh, agency's electronic medical records database, we can, uh, you know, interface with their doctors to help them uh, get prescribed nicotine replacement therapy, so we can put a note into their doctor that says, you know, this is something that you should look at at their next visit. Before I move on, all three of these programs, our heart disease, our diabetes, and our smoking cessation group, we are able to offer these in Spanish as well for our Spanish-speaking clients. So they are absolutely welcome in these three, and they can attend and participate in the full range that both of these, that all of these groups have to offer. Another part of our program is our art therapy and guided imagery groups. Uh, we have a registered art therapist as part of our staff who uses the creative process to aid in mental health and well-being. And the topics focus on deep reflective topics and sharing them with the group. So in art therapy, what we might do is there will be a topic of the day, for example, three pieces of advice that you might give to your younger self, or what does gratitude mean to you and how do you express it? And then the purpose is to use drawing materials or use uh, pictures from magazines and make a collage that represent that topic to you. Everyone will have a different answer and then everyone shares with the group um, and then gives each other support and encouragement. 
And in this this picture in particular, uh, not only do we hold our therapy sessions twice a week, but we like for us to be, you know, a really good interactive and social environment for the patients too. So we do holiday activities around Halloween and Christmas and things like that. And this particular picture was from Halloween where we got all the clients together for a pumpkin decorating contest to be able to, uh, you know, give them a great community atmosphere to do for, for Halloween. Also, with our art therapy initiative, we have a guided imagery meditation group. Our art therapist also does this meditation session that focuses patients on their breathing and progressive relaxation uh, to reduce stress, pain perception, and anxiety. The last group that we offer, uh, we partner with one of Evergreen's other departments, the HIV Health Education Department, to offer the Healthy Living Group. So this is uh, for those for, uh, patients living with HIV and AIDS, uh, discussion topics that talk about how to better understand the diagnosis, navigate healthcare, become a better self-advocate, and it helps to increase their HIV-related knowledge and achieve viral suppression, as well as overall wellness topics such as nutrition and stress reduction. And the goal of this group uh, is for group and individual counseling for enrolled patients and linkage to services as needed. One way that we measure um, our patient's uh, ability to get better through our program is through these well-being check-in and check-out surveys. We use these for the guided imagery meditation group as well as yoga and acupuncture, which I'll get into. We ask them uh, five questions that they rate on one to ten. So we ask them before the session, are they experiencing pain today? And then on one to ten, are you experiencing any muscle tightness, any anxiety, are you feeling irritable? and are you experiencing any depression today? So we ask them to rate this on one to 10 before the session, and then we ask them to do the same thing after the session. Uh, and our guided imagery participants throughout the year have reported 33.4% reduction of these symptoms after participating in a guided imagery meditation session. Also with Thrive, it is not only about the education that we offer in group settings, we want to make sure that our patients have access to uh, well-being initiatives that really help their health and help their stress and well-being um, and, their, and their physical health. So one way that we do that is we partner with several community partners, one of which being Heal Buffalo. Uh, Cheryl Erbacher comes to Evergreen to Thrive Wellness every week to conduct a yoga class. Our patients respond really well to this session. Uh, they've reported an average of 37.6% reduction in pain, anxiety, and stress using that survey. And we have a great group of, of patients who do come every week. They really like attending our yoga session. And we offer the yoga session twice per week to the patients. Another community partner that, is, uh, that we have is for acupuncture. We partner with Karen Khan, a licensed acupuncturist, to come in every week to conduct acupuncture at Thrive Wellness. She is able to do group acupuncture settings where patients sit in chairs in a circle and they receive uh, ear and head acupuncture. And then once the needles are in, then they practice a group meditation session. Uh, what's great about this is that the, the session can handle up to 8 to 12 participants at a time. And acupuncture has been shown to help in many areas, including stress reduction, pain reduction. It can even help in some patients to ease the, the burden, the symptoms of withdrawal. Uh, improve mental health, among many other benefits. Patients also complete our check-in and check-out survey, and they report a 59% reduction in pain, anxiety, and stress after doing the session. And we are able to offer acupuncture three times a week. Our, our other community partner is uh, Illumination Wellbeing. They are, uh, Janet Reese, Reese is a Reiki provider, and Reiki is a form of deep advanced meditation to help stress reduction and improved mental health. It also, uh, some of their reported benefits are pain relief, enhanced personal awareness, increased clarity and creativity, increased positivity, more powerful meditation, and holistic healing. Uh, and she comes to us twice per month to do this Reiki advanced meditation class. And finally, our last uh, community partner is we partner with Lauren Gresham of Core Cuisine and Revel Culinary Creations and she provides with us healthy meals for our five patients. 
So she makes uh, meal prep meals that are healthy, they are heart friendly, they are diabetic friendly, and she prepares about 60 to 80 lunches for us a week for our program. So that every patient who comes into Thrive Wellness for their group sessions or individual sessions can get a healthy lunch when they're here. And they can eat it there or on the go. She also is a great nutrition education instructor and comes in seven times a month for cooking demonstrations and nutrition workshops. She is able to, as you can see in the picture right here, she does the prep right in front of the patient. She engages them in the ingredients that she's using, ways to make their favorite recipes healthier, and ways to make it easy to cook so that you're not in the kitchen for a long time making a healthy meal. Um, she comes in also for a smoothie demonstration. She's able to show the patients how to make healthy fruit and vegetable smoothies uh, that are good for them, especially after a workout session or for meal replacement. So those are our community partners. I want to now get into our enrollment numbers. Currently, we have 135 patients enrolled in the program. And by education track, uh, you can see the numbers right here. Obviously, these numbers are add up to a lot more than 135, and that's because our, our patients who enroll in the program on average enroll in two to three groups. So that shows that our patients have both mental health and uh, metabolic, metabolic conditions that they're willing to uh, get the education that they need to help their own health. Um, so those are very well engaged. Obviously, there's some drop-offs to be expected. We do have patients with barriers related to transportation or their, or their physical health or, or family uh, obligations, but even still, we generally see 75 different patients coming in for programming each month for a total of 250 appointment sessions. So engaged patients are coming into our program an average of three times a month or more to engage with our program. So I'd like to get into some of our improvement in health outcomes that we've seen so far in the year that we've been running the Thrive Wellness Program. So we work with Evergreen Medical Primary and Specialty Care to receive lab results from patients so that we can better understand how their health is improving. So we get access to their lab results from the shared medical database uh, so that we can see how our patients are improving. We're looking at some key metrics for our patients, including blood pressure, cholesterol, A1C, and THQ9, which is a mental health assessment. So for our heart disease group, um, the data that I've collected so far, uh, the goal of these lab results is to look at each patient's medical file to gather a data point from roughly when they entered the program and then gather their most recent lab result for a before and after comparison. So looking at blood pressure, um, you can see that our patients on average started with an average blood pressure of 139 over 88 and those have dropped on average to 130 over 81. So that represents a 6.5 and 8.6% drop in both metrics of blood pressure so far. With cholesterol, uh, starting value 176.9. Now, uh, after enrollment in the program, 163.7, which represents a 7.4% drop. I put weight on here, but that was a negligible drop. For our diabetes group, um, we are here looking at blood pressure, cholesterol, and we're also looking at A1C, which is a measure of average blood sugar in the body. So our pre-values for when our patients enrolled in the diabetic group entered in Thrive was 140 over 89. That has improved to 133 over 81, a 5 and 9% drop in those figures for uh, blood pressure. With cholesterol, we've seen a drop from 186 when they entered the program down to 178 currently, so that represents a 4.3% drop. We've seen a, a small reduction in weight of an average of 4 pounds per patient, so that's a 1.8% drop in weight. And our A1C, this is an important measure for uh, diabetic patients. This is an average blood sugar reading over the last three months. So it's the lower the better with this number, and we've seen a 5% drop in A1C for patients enrolled in this program. For our art therapy patients, um, we do a little bit differently. We use a PHQ-9 mental health assessment. On this page, I'll show you what a PHQ-9 assessment is. So it's a nine-question 
assessment. It's used as a standard form in the medical health, in the mental health field. It's used by multiple departments at Evergreen, including the primary and specialty care, mental health counseling, and Thrive, among others. It asks patients nine questions that they rank how often they experience these conditions. So questions that ask about depression and anxiety, like little interest or pleasure in doing things, feeling down, depressed, or hopeless, trouble, falling asleep, or staying asleep, having little energy, questions related to their appetite, concentration, and any thoughts of, of self-harm also in there. And then they get ranked based on their numbers to those questions. Uh, the pre-value for this, uh, 10.8. Current value is now 8.5, so we've seen a 21% drop in these reported symptoms of uh, depression and anxiety through the art therapy program. I also put blood pressure on here just to see if the reduction in stress associated with this program can have an effect on blood pressure. And it shows that there's a small reduction in blood pressure uh, through the art therapy program. So those are our programs. Uh, so we offer a range of uh, education groups, and also we offer their secondary services, such as the yoga, acupuncture, uh, Reiki, and our lunch and cooking demos. This project would not be possible without the staff behind it. So on our Thrive Wellness staff, we have Laura Pastorella, who's a registered art therapist. She's been with the agency over 10 years. She brings a wealth of experience to facilitating group therapy sessions. Uh, patients respond very well to her and come to her for advice and help. Uh, Alex Maranca is our health and wellness pro uh, counselor. He does uh, all of the program intakes and the initial evaluations. He also meets with the patients to work on their personal goals uh, using advanced motivational interviewing techniques. He helps to facilitate the group sessions, and he runs his own secondary groups including a nutrition education group and a fitness education group. And Abby Jatinsky is our health and wellness program assistant. Uh, no program can run without a great person at the front desk. Abby helps to schedule appointments, get materials ready, uh, maintains our roster and databases. Among that, she also teaches her own group in Thrive Wellness. It's a learn to crochet group every Friday after the cooking demonstration. And that's been shown to offer a great uh, social atmosphere uh, and things like crochet also help because it's a repetitive motion task can really help with stress reduction and well-being. And finally, our community partners. Uh, we partner with Millennium Collaborative Care, and they have been working with us over the last year to uh, provide funding for our mental health and well-being initiatives, including the yoga, acupuncture, and guided imagery. They've been partnering with us since April of 2018. Uh, the Mac AIDS Fund is a longtime partner with Evergreen Health. They help uh, provide funding for our healthy lunches and our cooking classes. And finally, Population Health Collaborative. Uh, they've provided us with uh, the blood pressure monitors for our heart disease education initiative. Uh, they've provided a certification in teaching the diabetes education curriculum. And of course, today they've allowed me to uh, give a platform to be able to share the Thrive Wellness Program uh, with all of you. So I want to thank you, uh, everyone, for your time and for uh, joining in on the presentation today. And now I'd like to hear if you have any questions or comments or feedback. You can type them into the chat box. Thank you. Okay, all right. Thank you, James. Oh, that was a uh a wonderful presentation, and I personally learned a lot in terms of what the program is working on and, and the work that you guys are doing. So I have one quick question. For somebody who tends to work on data very often, have you thought about, you, you discussed that you have these programs are also provided in, in Spanish. So have you thought about looking at a difference within the, the groups in terms of the ethnicity and get the response rate? the program and perhaps that may be some impact um, in those different groups? Yes, I certainly can. Uh, as of now, I have been collecting data on our patient population as a whole, but I do, of course, have those demographics in hand, and certainly uh, we can rearrange the data to look at 
the impact on race and ethnicity um, or age or any other demographic factors that um, has been an impact on our program. So that is available to me. I we just need to, to crunch those numbers. In, in regards to the, 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 the different components of the program itself, mm -hmm. so you talked about the art, the art therapy and the, the different types of the programs. It seems like the art therapy is the one that gets most of the people mm -hmm. um, to attend to um, the, the session, right? Yeah. So can you speak to as to why that particular program itself gets a lot of attraction from the population that you're serving? Sure, absolutely. So all of our referrals come internally from Evergreen, from both the medical practice, from mental health and substance abuse counselors, from case managers. And when we started the program, we did think that um, the need was very high for the Diabetes and the Heart Disease Initiative, and it certainly is. But what we found is that the biggest reason that patients want to enroll in Thrive is for their mental health. Um, and so that's what we see the needs coming in on the referrals that we receive. And so that's the, that's the single group that patients enroll in the most. Now, the important thing to note there is, well, yes, absolutely, we get patients that enroll only in art therapy. We also have plenty who come to us with a mental health condition and a metabolic condition, and they enroll in multiple programs. Um, but I think the art therapy program itself is a great initiative. Patients respond really well to it. They get to use the creative process. They get to be in a good uh, social atmosphere. They get to share, uh, you know, things, uh, deep, you know, facets of their life that they might not otherwise get to um, because they get to use the art and creative process to help them with it. So it's really a great uh, program. Not only do we get the most referrals coming into us uh, with, for, for patients with mental health, but also they really stick with that program too. So we have a question from our audience, one question, and the question to James is, um, what is the age breakdown of your participants? Sure. So our, uh, our participants range in age from early 20s to about 75. The median age for them is going to be right around 55. So our patients, that's, that's about what our age breakdown is. Our median age is going to be about 55, so that's where most of our patients are falling in. So um, going back to the, the program itself and, and the different components of it, so initially when it started, um, how many programs did you start with and have you expanded upon that mm -hmm. for over the years? Yes, we did. So we started with the heart disease, diabetes, smoking groups, and the art therapy program. And then we also started with the uh, healthy lunches, the yoga, and the acupuncture. Since then, uh, we added the Reiki advanced meditation. We've added the cooking demonstrations from Lauren, our uh, chef provider. We have also added some secondary groups that my staff teach, such as a uh, nutrition education group, a fitness education group, the crochet group also. So yes, we have expanded our program offerings since uh, we started the Thrive Wellness program a year ago. Mm -hmm. Do you guys look to expanding your program more, or do you think the ones you have in place structure right now is sufficient mm -hmm. enough to get um, the patients okay. the results that they need? Okay, so one way we've expanded outside of our own program is that we have expanded to include programs in Evergreen's main lobby as well. So not only do we have uh, all of the programs that I discussed for patients enrolled, but we want to, of course, not only get more patients enrolled in Thrive, but we also want to use what we have to make Evergreen as a whole a more welcoming place for the patients. So we're down in the main Evergreen lobby several times a month. Our art therapist offers an open art studio where patients can just walk right up to her and do a quick five to ten minute art project. Uh, we also have, uh, we partner with the Food Bank of Western New York through our food pantry. One of their health educators comes in once a month to our, to our main lobby for a fruit and vegetable uh, cooking demo. We also are in the lobby every Friday to do a blood pressure check so that anyone can walk up to us, get their blood pressure checked, and start that conversation about their metabolic health. And uh, Lauren, who does our meals and cooking demos, partners with us once a month to offer smoothies in the lobby so that we can uh, attract patients in 
had get this movie for them and then talk to them about Thrive and other wellness initiatives at Evergreen. So yes, so we've expanded outside of the program and then we're looking at what we can expand within the program as we move forward. Okay. So we have another question from our audience and this question um, states, with your older population, the 55 plus, um, what nutritional issues have you encountered and if you have, then what are those? Okay, so nutritional issues that um, especially that segment of our population encounters, I would say it's trying to, well, one, trying to eat the right foods to help manage their their chronic condition, and this can be a range, not, not just um, heart disease and diabetes, but a range of conditions. But also, because of the nature of the, of the patients that we work with at Evergreen, uh, I said at the beginning, Evergreen really uh, focuses on those underserved by the healthcare community. Uh, our patients, you know, have an issue with just getting uh, healthy, healthy food at a, at a cheap price, you know, based on what they can afford. So, not only our older population, but many of our patients, um, you know, we're trying to work with them to see, okay, if this is what your budget is, you know, how can you maximize what you can buy with your budget? So, so one, uh, you know, nutrition-related barrier is food availability, um, and then another one is trying to eat the right things to help with their conditions, not only heart disease and diabetes, but also things like osteoporosis and, and other metabolic conditions and, and things, things of that nature. So, yes, we definitely try to work with them. We listen to what their concerns are, and we try to address, you know, their concerns, their chief concerns as they bring them up to us. So, earlier you touched on the, your partnership with Gradual Park mm -hmm. in regards to your tobacco cessation approaches. Um, can you touch on that a little bit more and expand on practice and some of the results that you've seen sure. in that particular um, realm of, of, of your program? Yeah. So we partner with Laswell Park um, for the uh, Clear the Air Smoking Cessation Curriculum. Uh, last year, uh, the tobacco cessation specialist at Laswell Park also uh, provided us with training on advanced motivational interviewing specifically related to uh, smoking cessation, uh, which our health and wellness counselor employs up to a great deal. Um, so with the smoking cessation, yes, we have absolutely had some people quit smoking. Uh, it is a hard thing to do, though. Uh, with our demographics, we see a lot of patients who are either current or former users of other substances. And one thing that I hear a lot with them is that, yes, I've put off of these other substances, but cigarettes is kind of that last thing, and it's very hard because of how the frequency of use, you know, if you're smoking a pack a day, that's 20 different cigarettes mm -hmm. throughout your day. So a lot of them do find that that's kind of the last thing that they're really trying to work on, and it is difficult. We have had a few patients quit, um, but we do have uh, patients who are still engaging with us, even if they've completed the program already, because they still want to come back to us for that, uh, motivational aspect and for the education. So it is definitely a little bit harder. Um, another thing that we do with Roswell Park is that their tobacco cessation specialists uh, come to us about every three months or so and they give us more literature and brochures, you know, especially with references for the New York State smoking quit line. Um, and then we can post those not only in Thrive but throughout the agency for other patients who are not engaged with us but are thinking about quitting smoking. So. We partner with them that way, and we definitely do our best uh, realizing the challenges involved in quitting smoking, especially for our population. All right. Thank you so much, James, for joining us today. Um, we still have some time, so if you have any questions that you'd like to ask James, or you're more than welcome to and we'll pass, on, pass those questions on to James. Um, once, once again, thank you so much for, for this presentation. And for us, Population Health, you can connect with us on via social media, whatever. It is our um, organization website at pubhealth.org, or you can join us on some of our Facebook and um, Twitter and Instagram pages and, and social media platforms that can get more information from us. Once again, today's presentation and information will be um, the audio for this presentation will be posted on our on our YouTube page, and the slides will be also posted on our Peace to Health website. Then. We will be sending out uh, a notification once those uh, materials are made available on our platforms. 
Uh, once more, if you're out there and you're doing this type of work or different works and um, you would like to showcase your work on one of our um, installments of uh, Population Health Webinar Series, we, we welcome you to get in touch with us. Um, we're more than, more, ha more than happy to um, put a spotlight on the, on the great work that's going on people are doing across the, the Western New York region. So we welcome everyone to the table and if, if this presentation is something that you really enjoyed and you'd like to be part of and provide, um, uh, conduct a presentation for your own program, then we welcome you to, um, to contact us and perhaps we, we can um, uh, arrange something for, for one of our webinar series. So if we, if we don't have any more questions, then this will be the end of today's presentation. And once more, thank you, James, so much for joining us today and giving us a, a great presentation on, on the flight program. So thank you, everyone, for joining us, and we will see you on the next um, webinar series. Thank you.